Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for coming to today's Folio Forum, which is sponsored by the Open Library Environment, EBSCO, and Index Data. My name is Laura Wright. I'm the Serials and E-Resources Cataloging Manager at the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm also a member of the Folio Metadata Management SIG, and I'm the host for today's event. Today's forum is a conversation about the past year and the year to come in the Folio project. Today's session, like all Folio forums, is being recorded and will be posted to the Open Library Foundation's YouTube channel and to the resources section of folio.org. As an open forum, participants can see participants' names and all questions submitted, and we have muted everyone except the speakers to ensure good sound quality. We value your participation and encourage you to engage in the topic. Use the question box within Zoom to enter questions and comments as they come to you. And I'd like to emphasize that it would be really nice if this could be a conversation with everybody today. Uh, the speakers will address questions as they come, most likely, depending on the way the conversation goes. So please do enter questions at any point. Uh, if you like to tweet, please use the Twitter hashtag Folio Forum. And we also encourage you to continue the conversation on this topic on the Folio Discussion website, discuss.folio.org. Our speakers today are Michael Winkler, Managing Director at the Open Library Environment, Christopher Spaulding, Vice President of Open Source Platforms and Communities at EBSCO, and Sebastian Hammer, President and Co-Founder of Index Data. So before I let our panelists talk, I'd just like to share a few numbers, a little trivia. So as of January 2019, the Folio project has, oh, sorry, I'm looking at, looking at tech stuff. Peter, I'm gonna let you worry about the video. <laughs> um, so as of, as of this month, Folio Project has 4,217 email subscribers, 1,664 Twitter followers, 805 Slack members, and 785 Discuss members. I looked at our calendar yesterday, and there are at least 10 regularly scheduled weekly SIG meetings, but I know there are many, many more regular subgroup meetings as well. And Folio community partners include more than 29 libraries or library consortia. Starting this year, the product releases are being named after wildflowers. So our current release is Aster, and in April, we'll have the Bellis release. So at this point, I'll turn things over to our panelists who are, it is rare, all in the same room at the same time. And they'll each start with a short update based on their perspective of the project over the past year. I'll let you decide who's going first. Yeah, shoot. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. I don't know how to do it. Oh. <laughs> All right. I, I, think, I think they just decided that I'm starting. Hello, everybody. Um, it's really great to be here again, and it's uh, really fun to be together with these guys again uh, to talk about the project. Um, I think my, my strongest impression for, for, from the past year has been just in the growth of the developer community. It's been, been really amazing to see it grow. I think uh, when we had this conversation last year, I was astonished at having come out of a meeting with, with some 60 people talking about Folio, and then we went on to have WolfCon with about 160, meeting, 160 people, and it felt like being at a conference, except there was a conference where everybody knew each other, where everybody were working on the same thing. So that was that was amazing. Um, the other thing that really has dominated the last year has just been seeing the whole community's focus come together around uh, getting ready to run Folio in the first real library, doing real library stuff. And, and watching that process has been, uh, and being part of that process has been really exciting. Um, I think at the last count, since we're talking about numbers, Laura, um, uh, depending on how you sort of slice and dice the, the numbers in our issue tracking system, we've developed somewhere around 1,300 features in Folio, and we're now working on somewhere around the last 50 that Shamas need to go live. Um, and I think the development team or the developer community has never been bigger, has, has never worked more efficiently than it does right now. So it definitely feels like 
getting a library up and running is well within reach for the community. Um, I, I'm sure we'll come back to that uh, during the morning. Um, just for us at Index Data, getting into conversations with libraries about what it might be like for them to run Folio and how Index Data can assist them has been a big part of our thinking and, and conversation and, and, and how we've kind of evolved as a team at Index Data to, to think about getting ready for this universe where suddenly Folio is a thing that's actually being used for real stuff. Uh, thinking about getting to that point after this journey we've been on for the last three years is, uh, is pretty exciting. So it's been a really, it's been a fun and exciting year. Um, looking forward to this one. Um, yeah, it has been. It's been a really incredible year uh, yeah. for the Folio project. Um, we've made just astounding progress uh, on the code and <clears throat> all these things take longer than you expect them to, but we really are looking at um, dropping production ready uh, code this year uh, in the near term even uh, to get Chalmers up and running. So everybody's really excited about that and very focused on getting that first library implementation. Beyond that, we're beginning to look at um, a system that really has all of the kinds of functionality that that libraries need to run and operate. Um, and, and people are beginning to do very uh, serious planning for what their uh, migrations and implementations will look like. And part of that is, uh, among the OLA partners at least, I know this is true outside of the partners too, is everyone is setting up servers. Everyone is starting to get uh, some hands-on experience with Folio, uh, running it and uh, trying to figure out how uh, they're going to integrate it with other systems that they're using, how to train their staff, um, and, and really beginning to think about the potential uh, of changing our workflows and uh, uh, really using this tool in the way that we had hoped it would be. So that part's really exciting. Um, Olay has had a very good year. Uh, we have added uh, three partners in the last fiscal year and three new uh, partners in this fiscal year, so we're growing. Um, and, and this is a result of our engagement with Folio, that, that people are seeing real value to uh, Ole as a stakeholder in this uh, community, and, and they're encouraged to uh, uh, look at Ole as, as a vehicle for, for how libraries engage with Folio and, and uh, with this um, very large development uh, process. I'll throw some numbers out too, uh, since we have numbers. Uh, uh, Olay has been consistent and, in fact, even grown its uh, investment in uh, the Folio project. We, we are maintaining 14 uh, developers. We have uh, four uh, product owners in the project. We have a designer in the project. Uh, and then just countless number of subject matter experts, really uh, uh, well over 100 uh, people who are committing time every week. As Laura says, we have lots of standing meetings, a lot of sub-meetings. Um, our Slack channels are burning up all the time, um, and, uh, and, and it's uh, reassuring for me as the managing director of Olay to see so many of our Olay uh, folks engaged at this level. The other thing that really exciting uh, happened this year was, uh, although we've had the Open Library Foundation uh, for a while, uh, for, for two years now, it was really in this year that it's come into its own. We've, uh, we've expanded the the board and brought on some uh, uh, really interesting board members who are beginning to look at the opportunity that the foundation provides for libraries. We've added communities. Um, uh, just most recently, the Coral community has uh, joined the OLF, uh, uh, the foundation. Uh, yay. Um, so it, it's really nice to see that. That's part of our uh, longer term strategy around um, uh, sustainability, not just of Folio, but of all of these efforts around how libraries really need uh, technology to support the kinds of transitions that we're going through right now. So I'm really looking forward to this next year. Uh, to see people go into production will be exciting. To see some of our capability and interest start turning to other <coughs> tools uh, that libraries need uh, will be really exciting as well. Christian. Uh, so um, hello, everyone. Um, looking back at uh, as I was driving in last night in, uh, um, from the airport, um, I was thinking about uh, where we were in 2017 uh, for, for this conversation. And we, were at the, uh, we were at the Smithsonian. Um, it was deathly cold outside. I walked in the hotel to meet these guys. My ears were 
uh, uh, were you know frostbitten and uh, um, right, right. but then um, uh, you know it seems like each year we try to top it of, of what we're doing in the project and even this year it's even colder than <laughs> than 2017 when we had our meeting um, uh, but we're 2017 we're in Smithsonian today we're in uh, the Folio Bat Cave in Philadelphia and it also made, made me think about uh, uh, about three years ago uh, at the Code for Lib conference meeting gathering here in Philadelphia, uh, Sebastian stood on a stage and started talking about a project that uh, uh, that he was starting, uh, 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 they were starting into index data with other partners, um, the Ole partnership uh, and, and uh, EBSCO, those initial stakeholders of, you know, we didn't even have a name for the project yet. It was just this thing. That just we some, some boxes on the screen. It was actually, it even started out with, imagine a box. <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, here we are now, almost three years later, and we have, uh, we have, you know, we're, we're right at the cusp of a, of a, uh, a production ready solution. Um, uh, very exciting that uh, um, uh, we continually, in, in my travels and in these guys' travels, uh, we're seeing uh, international interest, um, organizations starting to come and, and um, poke around the edges and start, starting to have conversations with the, the larger community. We're seeing small institutes to large research institutions and even uh, uh, a number of uh, national libraries that are kind of poking at the edge, looking at uh, uh, the infrastructure as something that would make sense for, uh, for them. What else? Um, the Fuller community continues to grow. Our partners community uh, continues to grow. Um, I'm excited about new communities also forming around the code base. Um, uh, organizations like uh, our ReShare, which I'm sure we'll, we'll mention um, uh, later in the, in the conversation. Um, uh, EBSCO continues also to, to be excited uh, uh, about its commitment to the project, its commitment to the community. Uh, we continue to focus on much of our uh, EBSCO internal development on uh, uh, building out integrations into, into the current code base of what you know, we'll deliver around services around uh, a folio, uh, uh, you know, our, our suite of tools. Uh, but also for the larger community, um, you know, we've, we've uh, um, brought more investment into the community. Uh, by the end of last year, we, uh, we're at about 30 developers now that we, we brought to, uh, to the program um, this last year. Uh, some of them are offshore, but, but a number of them are um, EBSCO developers uh, that will continue on, on the project going forward. Finally, both of you had mentioned as well, uh, EBSCO is extremely excited about that first uh, um, uh, university going, uh, you know, flipping that switch and uh, um, you know, looking towards Folio, uh, you know, midsummer of, of Chalmers University in Sweden um, and that, that commitment and uh, excitement around, uh, around that. So yeah, it's good to be, good to be here again and uh, looking forward to what's coming in this next year. It, it just struck me thinking about the first library to implement this will not be on the North American continent even, much less United States, and, and that's exciting to me. I tried to count the number of countries we had involved in the project yesterday, and I gave up. I thought about continents. I gave up on that, too. Um, I, at some point, the numbers stopped seeming significant, and uh, I, I tried to count the number of apps we had, too. And, that didn't really seem to to frame things in a meaningful way anymore. Um, I generally uh, I generally look at reports after uh, the forum to see where uh, people have logged in from or, uh, around the world, and we continually have uh, almost always um, uh, every continent um, uh, oh. except Antarctica, <laughs> and so we're we're you know that's that's one goal for this coming year is maybe to someone to. <laughs> So if the Murdo station is out there listening, give us a call. <laughs> well, if they're out there listening, then then we've got them on on this one, right? Right. Uh, we do have a actually Chalmers is in Sweden, so Sweden is going to be first. 
And on behalf of Scandinavia, I'm really excited that it's one of us. It's not yes. but, but it's, it's pretty close. We're part of the family. Each year, this discussion happens in an environment that's a little bit colder. So maybe next year. Okay. <laughs> Uh, was there a single standout moment for you over the past year, or maybe one or two standout moments? Uh, well, well, I'll start out. Uh, you know, it's interesting, and, and I think we've had this conversation, the three of us before, is that, you know, we worked really hard at getting Folio set up and started, and then in, and then in a way, we worked ourselves out of a job, um, because the community is has really taken over uh, lots of the responsibilities that, uh, that you would have expected to see in project um, uh, management and any kind of um, other project. So, you know, I find that I don't really know a lot about what's going on with the code at, at very detailed levels. Um, instead, what we are, I think the three of us hit on is there's this general progress that we can see, we can see the code heading towards something that um, can uh, support what libraries are really trying to do. So instead, I, I'm going to highlight uh, um, a little bit on the foundation uh, side of this is uh, how important it is for the foundation to get its feet under it, uh, uh, to get uh, stable and, and be able to really support the projects that uh, are under its umbrella. Uh, we really saw that happening this year. It, it is having serious conversations about uh, uh, how to attract new uh, partners, how to attract new vendors. Uh, to the community and uh, what the impact of Folio rolling out uh, will have on the foundation and on its potential membership. So that innovation that we came up with some time ago that seemed um, really to be for uh, just a single practical purpose of providing a home for the software, for the intellectual property, has really started growing uh, into something more important, uh, not just for Folio, but for lots of uh, associated projects around it. And we think that that infusion of people coming in, that infusion of innovation coming in is only going to be good for the Folio community and for all of the communities that are part of uh, the foundation. I think uh, echoing and picking up on some of those themes, um, I know that when we first began work on this project, the three of us, uh, about three years ago, we spent a lot of time trying to imagine the Folio community into existence. You know, at the time there was maybe you know, half a dozen to a dozen people involved in Folio. And, and we had a vision of a community forming around this when we knew that the community wanted to be there. And, and we were trying to imagine the shape that it would take and, and how it would unfold. And, and you mentioned one of the dimension, that one of those dimensions is the idea of new communities forming around the software platform and extending the reach of the core platform into new areas. Um, I spent some time in Germany last year participating in, in some of the meetings of the German uh, Folio community, which is probably one of the most vibrant and, and busy outside of, of North America. Um, and that was really fascinating. Um, I know that one of the conversations I remember we had very early on when we, we talked about what success would look like and we imagined you know, the day when there might be Folio conferences that will be spontaneously arranged by other people and we would just be spectating. Um, and that began happening last year, uh, and and that's been kind of wild to watch. It's taken on in, in a very real sense a life of its own, um, not just one life, but it turns out lots of different lives in different areas, um, and that's just enormously gratifying. It's it's also a little bit odd. I have the same sensation sometimes as as Mike that you know there's bunches of things happening that we don't know about, um, and there really was a feeling that that I think we had when this first began, that we were almost sort of willing it into existence and talking it into existence by just trying to take these ideas and share them and share them and share them and share them over again. Um, so that's been, that's been very special to watch. Yeah. yeah I feel, um, just to echo that as well, is I feel at the very beginning, we could drop in uh, and, and really keep tabs on, on the whole project. Right. And uh, over time now, I, uh, I tend to focus in on these are my, you know, this is the interest that I have right now. And I can, I can follow that, but the, the vastness of, of the project and what's happening, it is, it, it's hard to understand until you sit into a, a sprint demo and you start to see everything come to wired, uh, you know, wired together. Um, it's very exciting. 
Um, I actually have two moments of this last year that, that really excited me. Um, one is on the technical and, and one is on the, um, uh, the evangelizing or education side. Um, uh, we had our first bug fest about uh, a month ago uh, where you know, we, we really you know, stress the system, a bunch of us get on and, and um, a, a bunch of it was the uh, POs, but there were, there were a number of, of uh, uh, members of the organization. And we, uh, um, we really started to, to hit on these bugs and, and you know, find them. Many of them were, were closed the same day that uh, they were discovered and fixed. But the, the, the best part was from, from software development I've done in the past, is that um, you know you had that first bug fest, and sometime during the bug fest, everything flames, everything comes to a burning halt and explodes. Never happened. Uh, the whole time the service stayed up. Uh, um, uh, all the stress testing, we um, everything uh, um, uh, continued to move forward. So that was really exciting. The other one though is an experience I had with uh, uh, with Michael. And uh, David Carlson, uh, Dean of Libraries at Texas A&M, we did a, um, a tour of Mexico, three cities, uh, um, basically an education and, and evangelizing uh, around the project. We thought it would be just mainly Mexican uh, uh, higher ed coming in to, to these events because you know, the events have been internationally generally between 20 and 100 attendees. What'd you say? Yeah, yeah, totally. 20 to 100 attendees. We, uh, in Mexico though, we had uh, organizations coming from uh, around Latin America, flying into Mexico to be part of these events from Colombia, from Chile, um, from Peru. And uh, they, they were showing up uh, at multiple sites. And actually a couple um, institutions came in from um, Spain as well. But it was the final day at, uh, at UNAM in Mexico City that um, really just sort of blew my mind that we had, um, uh, we had to get overflow for the, uh, the auditorium. There were 400 librarians that showed up. It was the, uh, my first experience of, of truly feeling like a rock star that uh, um, being able to present about, uh, about the project and the amount of questions and feedback um, uh, was just fantastic. I mean, it was, there was a video feed between rooms, and then eventually we were also uh, shuttled between the two auditoriums. It was, it was really spectacular. It really was. It was a lot of fun. It's funny to hear you talk about sort of willing this into existence, because I am now part of that community that you've willed into existence. And I wanted to share my perspective on that with you, that it really is a community. Uh, when I showed up at WolfCon, which was this past May, I met all these people whose voices I knew. <laughs> and I met them in person for the first time. And it was almost like a family reunion, even though we were just meeting for the first time. And, and that experience has really continued to inspire me. So, so it, well, hi, you know, you're bringing up something that, that we were remiss in not bringing up. One of the highlights of the year, in fact, was WolfCon, uh, was the opportunity to bring together, uh, as Sebastian said, 120, 140 people or so uh, in Durham back in May um, for our first conference. And yeah, there was a lot of that experience of, I've worked with you for, for 10 months now. How are you doing? <laughs> I've never met you before. Um, and, and and just really kind of bringing the community, you know, solidifying the idea that we were a community. Uh, there's a set of videos uh, that were made um, that are on our YouTube channel of interviews with participants. Uh, we closed each day with a Wolfden uh, interview of, of one or two people uh, that were pretty interesting. So we're really looking forward to our next WolfCon that will be mm -hmm. happening uh, uh, this year uh, to bring everyone together again. Yeah, I think there was that, that, that group effervescence that happened uh, in Durham was, was pretty, uh, pretty amazing. That it, you know, we, we started thinking that you know, we probably will have about 100, 110 people show up. And uh, you know, yeah, it was, it was close to uh, um, 160 actually, yeah. uh, uh, people showing up. But also um, there was you know, certain presentations like uh, um, Kate, who was so you know pivotal for the uh, the project? Um, 
you know, seeing people walking up to Kate just to say, I just needed to introduce myself because, you know, I, I hear your voice almost every day. Yeah. We start each morning with sort of a, a session walking through the features that different teams have worked on. And, and I, every morning I'd sit in the audience with a different group and people would be like, oh my, there's, there's a lot of stuff there. Look at what we made. You know, and then, then endless rows of breakouts with different groups meeting and talking about different aspects of the project from technology and software issues to various aspects of functionality and, and imagining things that might happen going forward. It was really amazing. Well, and it was it was a very positive experience from from my perspective also. You know, just just for those listening, it's not <laughs> It, I, I feel like that that effervescence permeates the project, uh, and uh, I'm I'm really hoping we can figure out how to keep that going. Um, before I before I throw another question at you, I just wanted to remind all the participants that this this can be a dialogue. We would love to hear any questions. There's nothing is uh, out of the question. <laughs> Anything, anything you've always wanted to know about Folio, uh, please do send us questions. Um, but until you do that, I'll keep throwing things at our panelists. Um, so we've been very positive. <laughs> and uh, oh, someone wants to see basic searches of bib records. I think we, <laughs> I don't know that we're set up to do a demo. Um, but we should do one of those really soon. We yeah. do have a we do have a Mark Cat demo forum coming up planned in April, which would cover some of that. Um, so I was thinking that the sprint review would have some of that too. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, you and, and then even um, uh, Harry uh, Kaplanian's uh, um, uh, Yep. Can actually go into uh, to pour a push of that. That is true, and that's happening next week. So, so what are some of the greatest challenges that you think this project will need to overcome in the next year, or even in the next six months? Uh, I'll, I'll start again. Uh, I, I, this is going to be a really interesting year because right now we have the luxury of, of um, organizing ourselves and focusing ourselves as a software development community. End of story. Um, so all of the effort that we have, all of the thinking that we have really is about how to accelerate the development, how to, how to stay true to that innovative vision that we think we have around Folio and the platform approach, uh, all of those sort of things. Um, but in this year, we're going to see libraries start going into production or pre-production, planning for their production uh, implementations. And that's going to have a fairly dramatic uh, impact on the project. Uh, we will have to rethink the way our, our resources are arrayed uh, because as, as folks go into production, they're going to need support. They're going to find things that don't work quite the way we expect it to. Although I will say, having been involved in many open source projects, the amount of testing that's going on in Folio is impressive. Um, uh, much more so than other projects that I've seen, we brought in people who um, are professional uh, around how to design test protocols uh, and implement them. Uh, so we, we, I'm not saying that it will be defect-free uh, software, obviously, but uh, we're going to have as good a chance as, as any professional uh, or, or commercial system does uh, in that. But people will have demands back on the project, and how we respond to that is going to be uh, a bit of a challenge because we are not done developing yet. I mean, we're still seriously in the mix. I think uh, we've always said at Index Data that there's a certain purity to a software project before it actually has an installed base. We don't have to worry about that stuff. You can just, you know, all your users are imaginary uh, and they're always happy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think, you know, one particular aspect, I think absolutely the challenges that Michael mentions will be a huge part of this, you know, managing the, the duality of supporting install base and also looking forward and developing new features and figuring out how we prioritize those things. That's daunting. Um, what, I'm, what I've really been looking forward to are, are the conversations with libraries looking at the migration of workflows and processes. We know that we have 
a lot of the functionality in place in Folio to receive data, to receive uh, you know, circulation rules and patron data, bibliographic data, holdings data, financial data. But there's a big part of a migration of a library management system that involves migrating workflows and processes. And that will be new. Nobody has done that for Folio yet. And, and there are ways in which Folio has made deliberate choices to try to kind of break some of the trends and models that have been that are maybe common to other 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 ILSs. The, the, the app model has made us sort of look at breaking things up in a way that would lend Folio well to being a flexible system to to taking on different kinds of uses. But what, how that unfolds in practice when we actually look at doing real library stuff in it, that's going to be very interesting to follow. And I think we'll have to watch that really carefully um, to kind of navigate that space and make sure that we keep the flexibility of the platform while also meeting those everyday needs. Yeah, uh, flexibility is, uh, at this point in the project, is super exciting. Yeah. And that's why we have many organizations coming to, uh, to, the, um, to the project to look at the code base, to look at you know, our vision. But it, it, uh, once, we're, once we're in production, that's, flexibility is also really scary. Yeah. Uh, so there's pieces around that for the, um, uh, the coming year. Um, I would say I, I, would, I would pretty much mirror or echo what both of you have said is that um, you know, heading into uh, a year of uh, sites um, uh, migrating um, or even doing tests towards migration for you know, early 2020, uh, that's, that's when you start having serious conversations around you know, prioritization and, and uh, um, so those, are, those will be absolute uh, challenges. You've got a good point, though, with that. I'm going to call out uh, Anton's name. Yeah. Um, having a, uh, a full-time uh, um, person that's focused on quality uh, has been, um, even on the commercial side, um, uh, generally that comes a little bit later. Uh, and it's been exciting to, to, have, him, uh, to have him involved. Um, and I think we've all learned a lot from, uh, from his approaches. I, um, it, it kind of cracks me up as well that uh, you know QA people are generally um, somewhat uh, negative. You know they'll go down the path of of um, uh, well, I found these <laughs> issues, but when you say well, but how is that in the whole spectrum? It's like oh, we're doing great. So um, it, it it has been exciting to have that. So that at the point when we are actually going towards you know, those first um, uh, really testing and betaing of of the solution. I feel we are um, uh, we're already running out of the you know out of the gates. Yeah, one other thing that I'd like to bring up, though, know, as a challenge is is we have been at this for some time, and our developers have been working for a long time on this code base. Uh, all of our subject matter experts have been contributing quite a bit, and as we see our partnership go into production mode, is there's going to be a little bit of a brain drain. People are going to pull back their committed resources to to help support their own implementations. Uh, so there's going to be some recycling and refreshing that goes on this year. Um, how we manage that uh, will say a lot about uh, how the community is holding together. Uh, so I, I don't want to be Pollyannish about that. That's not an easy thing to navigate. And in fact, lots of open source projects stumble at this point of going into production. Um, uh, we have as good a chance as I've seen, though. Uh, we've got a really robust community. Uh, and we've tried to cover lots of bases um, thinking about this transition that's coming. It's a, it's a test of fire of the software. Um, but it's also, in many ways, a test uh, by fire of the governance model that we've set up in, in Folio. And that's evolved kind of in, in some ways. It's evolved organically through a very open conversation between the stakeholders as we, as we move forward. And I'm, I'm really pleased and proud with the work that the project has done to formulate that model. Um, that model will have to adapt and grow too as we, as we start to see this new kind of stakeholders come into the project, the libraries that are in operation, the service providers that are responsible for those libraries. And, and figuring out how that balance works, I think, will be, will be really interesting. I think it's one of the, with EBSCO, one of the things that we are, uh, we're thinking a lot about is, um, you know, we're at the cusp of, of 
um, you know, project and product. You know, as we think about our business models and uh, a, a you know, monetized solution, but we, we also are very concerned about um, how we are a citizen within the, the larger community context. And, and you know, there, there's, a, um, uh, there's, there's scales there that we have to yeah. uh, um, uh, consistently uh, ask ourselves about. And I, I think one of the pieces there is that we just, uh, and even challenges that we've had this past year, is that uh, to always be open and, and completely transparent in, in why, we're, why we're doing a certain thing or why we're requesting a, a certain piece. I, I, you know, there, there will be a challenge also as, um, as other uh, commercial entities uh, see this happening, seeing uh, sites going live and seeing an open code base, of how they come to it. Do they come to the community? Do they just come to the code base? Right. And um, how uh, how we interact with them, how we welcome them, or how we guide them um, to to also be a uh, a good um, uh, citizen. I, I I hesitate to make comparisons, but but Michael, you did compare this briefly to other projects you've been involved with, and. I'm thinking that what might make Folio different is the community. Is do you see that? Do you see that also? And is there anything else? I mean, what is there anything that makes Folio, the Folio project different? Uh, you know, it, it seems to me that there is a little bit uh, that makes it different. Uh, I think I, I don't know about uh, both of you or or your company's experience, but at least for the OLA partners, we learned an awful lot about what makes a, a successful project, um, how to keep people engaged and, and uh, those sort of things. So I think you're right to call out, it's the strength of the community that gives us real hope, but it's not just that there's a lot of people who are well-wishers, there's a lot of people who, this is, this is the work that they do, uh, you know, on, on some sustained basis, I mean, uh, you, you joined the project when Colorado joined the project. We pretty much immediately said, "Let's give Laurel Wright uh, 47 things to do." <laughs> um, so there's lots of work uh, that that people can engage in. Uh, and and as we had said, you know, we're much less directive now. People are finding the things that they're good at, or the things that they want to do, the things that the project needs, and really step into that. So I'm encouraged um, uh, that that the strength of our community really will carry us through this transition, uh, that we will be able to, in a sense, bifurcate our efforts to keep development strong and, and moving forward uh, to, to handle bugs and things like that, but also to prepare ourselves and, and other libraries for implementations. I think the nature of the community uh, compared to some projects that we've been involved in or participated in of, of communities we've, we've existed in, um, Folio didn't arise spontaneously as, as a short-lived grant-funded project or as a single library or a single company's sort of investment. Um, it was always a very deliberate act of collaboration amongst organizations. It was a shared investment in a product. And, 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 I've, and I think we've always been very clear and very deliberate about that. So we talk about the community but that community grew out of a shared institutional investment by Olay, by its, its, its member libraries, by, by companies wanting to do this together as organizations. Um, so, so whereas you will see other projects that are either driven very much by volunteer efforts, uh, maybe even by, 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 you know, by some, some, uh, some political drive, or you see projects that are driven by by some specific idea and 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 a time limit of the grant. We always knew that the folio would exist for the long haul. We've always ex expected and hoped certainly that it would grow into a piece of software, a community that makes, might exist for for decades, um, and that there, we would come to this point at some point. So I, I feel like the community is very very ready for it because we always expected that this day would come, and I think we're mindful of. Of, of wanting to protect that investment in addition to, to curating the community that we're part of. We want to see this transition be successful. 
And I think each of us have notions about what that look and, and, and a real desire to see it succeed and ultimately find some, some state that's harmonious in the future. That, um, you know, I, th I think we, we, the project architected itself for that sustainability, for that, yeah. that long haul, that long picture. And I, I, I want to be clear as well as that, you know, um, uh, I've been part of other, uh, other projects as well, and other projects have been, um, you know, they've been at a, a, a smaller scale. I feel that this, the scale of this, uh, of what we're trying to, uh, 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 to deliver, I also want to be uh, totally clear is that, you know, not every day is sunshine. Um, you know, we, we're, uh, we're, <laughs> we're a big family and, you know, families, uh, um, families don't always get along. I think the, uh, the really strong, um, I think the, the piece about that is that though we, we generally put things on the table and if we have a big disagreement, we figure out ways, <laughs> we, we figure out ways to get people in a room uh, to to work it out, we we you know th misunderstandings happen over email or you know even over uh, over video, and then every once in a while to get people in a room to work through a misunderstanding or a uh, um, a focus that um, uh, um, you know two separate uh, um, or diverging paths, etc. Bring them together, and in most cases we've had uh, a consensus. Yeah. We've come out stronger with an understanding that we know we're going to disagree. We know that uh, we're going to bump up against um, uh, issues, but uh, you know, as long as as we put them on the table, the, the community will will continue to uh, to grow and be stronger. Has 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 there been anything in the past year that surprised you? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know that I would characterize it as surprise. I, I, I guess it was a pleasant uh, surprise uh, to see the reshare community form. Um, so um, from the beginning, we talked about Folio as a platform approach that uh, as a result, uh, you can build lots of things on top of it. And, and the thing that the Folio project has decided to focus on primarily right now is to build that platform that anyone could use to build something on top of it and then to demonstrate how to build something on top of it and what we're building is a replacement for your current generation system um, for resource management and, and access um, or what people would typically think of as the library system. Um, Reshare is this project that spun up around the same philosophy of Folio of, of community investment and stakeholding. Um, of innovative vision that is really trying to change the, the way the market works. Um, and they are in the process of figuring out their technology, but it looks uh, very, very likely that they'll be dependent on several pieces of that platform that the Folio project has designed. So it's not a surprise because we did that by intention, but it's a surprise in that it happened so quickly and in many ways somewhat effortlessly. It's not like the reshare people are looking at the pieces of folio that they're interested in using and saying, oh, that's got to be rewritten. They're pretty happy with the functionality that is instantiated in those modules and how they'll work for the purposes that they have. And that's very reifying for me. Uh, very much so. And I think it, in, and the, the, the platform was a piece of it. Looking at the platform as, as, as a model, as something that could be reused, that didn't have to be built by, from, from scratch. That was a big part, but but I would say that the, the Open Library Foundation and the governance model that evolved in Folio was also part of the sort of tool set of things that were being looked at by the research stakeholders when they thought about how to approach things. The Open Library Foundation provided a, 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 an almost ready-made model for an organization. It solved a big part of, of, of sort of the challenge and the questions that arise when you're starting a new project, which is what's the home? who owns the copyright, who, who speaks on behalf of the project, how do we organize ourselves? The Open Library Foundation provided this lightweight, elegant model for solving that problem. Um, 
which isn't really surprising because when we when the Open Library Foundation was created, it was because there wasn't something like that, and we were like, well, we wish there was something like that, <laughs> and it was hard work. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher <laughs> slaved and Michael slaved for months and months of uh, pulling together the Open Library Foundation, but having I it exist now is is just hugely valuable and 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 the governance model as well the, the the structure that was set up in folio we've been able to sort of see that unfold the idea of a strategy strategy group a, a product management group subject matter experts working with user experience specialists development teams working with those that sort of four layer structure that evolved organically in in, in folio um unfolded as mike says really elegantly and really easily in, in the conversations and reshare. And, and for me, that's probably been the most exciting thing that's happened in, in 2018 as, as well. And realizing that there's a, there's a repeatable model here where libraries and commercial companies can come, can come together and can manage jointly a process of managing a complex software project, a, a complex effort of product management. And, and there's this whole ready-made kind of organization and model for how to do it. I think that could end up being as transformative to libraries as, as Folio itself. You know, uh, on that point, uh, um, uh, this year I presented at Open Repositories with, uh, with Ginny Boyer uh, from uh, Olay, basically on, on the sustainability of open source projects in higher ed and ways that this model could be used in, in, open, in the open repository movement, but also in, in, in other spaces. And um, uh, what was interesting is that, is that uh, one of the first things that Ginny did was she headed down the path of really talking about that the, the foundation actually opens that space for a model where um, uh, foundation money can come into the foundation, but also um, vendor support to to support these uh, these projects. Um, one of the things that that really surprised me though this year in in a kind of taking this a different direction was uh, I was meeting with one of the the, the, the partners in the or vendors that are working in the um, in the project uh, uh, knowledge integration out of out of Sheffield in the UK and I was meeting with uh, with with Ian uh, and and Rob and they were um, uh, they were talking about the, the platform and we were talking about different integrations and they brought up, you know, we're starting to think about how we can use the, the platform for other things. And they had noted that they, they had started playing around because they work in, uh, they work in the museum space, but they also do a lot with council government. And, um, you know, they looked at each other and they said, we never want to build a user knowledge base again. Um, yeah, that's one of the things you, you always have to do. If there's something that we can just we can just tag and reuse and all these pieces, then we can easily spin up and show um, a, a proof of concept to uh, uh, you know a customer. It, it completely blew my mind because it was one of those moments of I had thought that that organizations, especially in higher ed, are going to come to the platform and they're going to see opportunities. Uh, to use the platform for other things. And that was a metric. That yeah. was something I was like, great, we're headed down the right path. I had not thought about a completely different space, a technical space of using the platform. So that was a, um, uh, that was a, a kind of a mind exploding uh, moment. Although it was completely predictable. <laughs> <laughs> With Ian? Um, yes. Yeah, well in the sense that that's what we had sort of designed yeah. um, the community to support, uh, the, the foundation to support, and the code to support. And in fact, another thing that I guess I could characterize as a surprise, but a, a, an intentional one this year was the Folio community seeing that kind of platform goodness and what it could spawn to, to other efforts, efforts that were resourced differently or, or separately from Folio. Um, and, and, it, and we made a decision within Folio that that platform should have its own life, that it should have its own right. stakeholders. Uh, that would include people from, let's say, the reshare community uh, and other communities as they begin adopting uh, the platform. Uh, so we're really excited about that. That's at, at a very, very early stage of development, but we want to make sure that it's a democratized environment for people who um, 
want to build dependencies on that platform and that they have a voice in it? Well, we've, we, we held up the, the smartphone as an analogy so many times in the first years, and, and, but there's, there's still a big difference between saying it's going to be just like that and seeing it actually begin to unfold, seeing the, the app store basically begin to come into life, even though it doesn't exist as a visible app store yet. The idea that you've got this platform that can be applied for different purposes, seeing that really happen, you know, it's not all of my, it's not all your ideas that become real, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and this one did, and, and that's a big deal because it was a really big idea. And we actually do have a question specifically about the App Store. All right. Just, are there, are there updates? Where, where does the App Store stand? Well, it's been, it's been suggested by, 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 by people. What's the, the, the short story is that I think that the, the, the App Store kind of exists at, at, at different levels. And I sort of liken the current state of Folio to what uh, the Linux operating system was like when it first came into existence. And, and there was an operating system and you could go and you could download uh, pieces of software and source code from FTP sites around the world. And you could port them and install them and make them work. But it required hand work. It required some real skill to make it happen. And the, the sort of layers that were built on that through distributions like Red Hat and Debian and by like adding graphical interfaces on top and, and a more sort of click, you know, drag and drop or point and click kind of uh, uh, app store was built on that infrastructure. We didn't initially prioritize having the, 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 the point and click functionality because we knew that for until we got a library up and running, we probably would only have one of each app. And we wouldn't have a lot of resources to spare in the project to build apps that weren't on that sort of list of things that you really needed to run a library. So it hasn't been an, an enormous priority, but it's very much baked into the architecture itself. A, a development team can take the Folio platform, throw away everything that doesn't look like a library management system and be, begin to build up other stuff. But it's very much a, a technical exercise at this point. Um, I think we'll, I, I hope very much that we'll see more focus on, on the aptness of, of Folio happening in, uh, in 2019. Though. It, it's inevitable because as libraries go into production, they're going to take existing tools that they've used with their other systems and they're going to modify yeah. them. And, and what we're providing because of the shared infrastructure that everyone would be using is the opportunity for those developers to do something that's very hard to do, which is to get other people to use your code. <laughs> um, so I don't know what, exactly what the App Store ultimately will look like, but, but you know, maybe towards the end of this year and into next year, we'll start seeing people develop little utilities that are sitting around the side of Folio. And hopefully we can champion those, uh, get people to uh, see what's going on, to collaborate on them, to make them even better. And then we'll start seeing utilities that are being used at multiple in institutions and supported by either one yeah. uh, or supported by a vendor uh, or really supported by some small collaboration of, of developers or organizations uh, to, to achieve something. So um, we'll have to see how that begins, but we just know that once it's out there, all these uh, system managers are going to start writing Python scripts around the side of it. So. I think it's likely we'll see more than one app store, I should say. And yeah. there may be some app stores that are very mediated by particular service providers and vendors, and there'll be others that are that are sort of more open and wild west where you'll see the crazy things being tried out. Yes, the Hello Dolly uh, yeah. app. Yeah. <laughs> As a subject matter expert, I, I like to think of the possibility of having a workflow store. Or, or even the other day, we were, we were looking at basic suggested default mappings if you're bringing Mark into inventory and thinking about sharing mappings. It's just the power of the community, right? Uh, right, the, because once one of us has done it, why should we all figure it out all over again? That's right. It should be mapping reports. Yeah, uh, yeah reports will be that. another place where the app store, I think, really works well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And, and, you know, and I, I think we look at it, will this, you know, uh, will that be under Folio or, you know, eventually I just wonder around uh, uh, infrastructure, if this is something that will be all the way into something that's supported by uh, the Open Library Foundation 
that moves across you know everything that uh, the foundation supports. Yeah. So, so this is the second year you've done this, and I'm hoping next year <laughs> you'll be doing this again. Um, do you? Well, as Christopher says, it's been cold and Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll next year. So, so in your parkas next year, if, you know, if what what do you hope you'll be look, talking about next year? What do you hope maybe will have happened, or and what do you hope maybe you'll be focusing on? Well, the obvious thing is is we have um, at least one implementation coming uh, this year. Uh, we probably will have some partial implementations in in this coming year as well. Um, so, you know, sitting here a year from now, we'll be reviewing, hopefully, the success of those uh, implementations, the experiences that those libraries are having bringing the software out. We hope to be uh, uh, beta testing uh, Project Reshare already by the, by the end of this year. Yeah. Uh, so fingers crossed. Uh, that'll be a fun thing to talk about. And, and yeah, I would, I would be, I would, from index data side, hope to be deep in, uh, in, in the work of getting libraries up and running as well. So. I'd expect to see a lot of implementation and testing and migration activity happening. Yeah, I think next year I'll be talking about the you know the uh, the excitement and that and the uh, the difficult or harried moments during those migrations and um, the the uh, coming to the light and things being you know okay and moving forward. I can also see imagining talking about various services that you know that EBSCO will be bringing to to market. Uh, around uh, Folio, as we start to talk about analytics and and um, you know, repositories and things like that, um, as a you know where we're going next, where the vision is is headed. I think it will be really exciting to be talking about new communities yeah. Uh, yeah. that might spring out that uh, have been not just joined the Open Library Foundation, but perhaps incubated. Um, so we know there's this interest and in activity floating around institutional repositories. Um, we have conversations around digital library technology, and then you could you could imagine uh, you know that, that there's there's kind of levels of, of engagement with Folio where you can you can build an app, but but actually attracting an entire new community of stakeholders to the platform and and seeing something new unfold, I think is 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 just such an exciting aspect of what Folio as a model can do, and I'd love to see more of that happening. And, and I think next year, sitting here, what we'll be talking about, you know, coming to us, uh, will be that pivot, that transition from being a pure development environment uh, or project to one that is sustaining and supporting itself. Mm -hmm. um, so the long-term uh, sustenance of this, I mean, when libraries implement these kinds of systems, they tend to implement them for a while. Um, they want to know that it's going to be around and that it's a robust community and we, we will be spending effort. Uh, I, I predict the three of us sitting here next year would be talking quite a bit about how the project is organizing itself to give people that confidence uh, to see a robust uh, community of vendors who can provide a variety of services of the community itself providing some services back to libraries who, who are either implementing migrating or, or just in pure operation and to a developer community that wants to continue to innovate and, and use the platform and use the code that we have to start having that app store be a bit richer of here's two cataloging modules, here's 16 circulation modules, <laughs> um, those sort of things. Um, but being able to, to keep everybody focused on this isn't just a one thing project, this isn't a one time thing and it isn't a one thing. We're not trying to solve one problem uh, but there's lots of issues that libraries uh, uh, face around this space. So how we innovate there will be important. I would, uh, I would also love to see if, if 19 is the year where we see Folio take a real step into um, modeling out and developing infrastructure for working with linked data. Um, so Laura, you and I both have interest in, in metadata management and I feel like there are lots of conversations happening right now that, that suggest that we could see Folio take the plunge. We already have a lot of the infrastructure and the models, um, but actually moving towards figuring out what does it look like to have a, a, a real, a true linked data centric set of workflows around cataloging and metadata management, I think is a huge opportunity. And I'm, 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 I, I've got a good feeling we'll see some of that unfolding this year. 
I, I see 2019 as well as uh, you, you mentioned infrastructure that the, the infrastructure matures to the point where we'll start to see more and more um, uh, innovation testing concepts playing around with ideas that uh, which is you know one of the things we're trying to solve here is ways that we can easily uh, uh, proof out ideas and then go forward but, you know instead of you know building massive projects to test something we can just spin something up and say this is a direction we need to head we'll be able to talk about these interesting things that have happened at this you know institution or this vendor you know that's such an important thing to bring up it is in our original vision of folio and we used to talk about it a lot more of it being a laboratory a, yeah. an, an experimental environment so when we talk about that it's supposed to provide this opportunity for innovation in libraries that's what we're talking about is getting away from the let's all put our resources in this one shot deal and it better work right. uh, but instead uh, provide an environment where it's much easier to do experiments and to learn from uh, you know for lack of a better word failures to learn from what people try that works and, and doesn't work but good ideas are good ideas and maybe they just need the right community of developers and subject matter specialists around that idea to really get something innovative out the door. One of the things that really struck me in the conversations at WolfCon, and, and, and I often find that in, in conversations in Folio when we have groups of, of subject matter experts and, and developers together, is this sense that Folio, Folio is a community where technology is, is moldable and plastic in a way that it isn't in the traditional model of library management software being something that you acquire through a contracting process and and you're stuck with it for 10 years in, in Folio, we're a community where in some ways everything is possible. Um, it's more so right now because again, we're free of those pesky users and, and installed base. <laughs> but I, I hope that we'll be able to retain that and find a way to retain that spirit in Folio where, where it's legitimate to try out things and we don't get sparked down and stuck feeling like, you know, it, 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 we're locked into a certain path because of the user base. So that's a problem that we have to solve. So back to your, your description of, of software before it's implemented being pure, we're, you're looking forward to, to being fully steeped in the impurities by next year. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, we, we have a question about the acquisitions module. Yes. Of uh, uh, how it's coming along so yes. far. Yes, yes. One, one thing to point out is acquisitions it's not necessarily an acquisitions module it's a uh, acquisitions workflows because it it affects uh, cross uh, cross app uh, and, and actually I'd love to um, uh, to, to, to point the uh, the attendee to um, uh, the most recent um, uh, sprint demos yeah. uh, because you'd be able to see uh, a bunch of the pieces and how they're 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 being wired together um, being able to see Aspects of it within uh, within funds, uh, but also around uh, agreements and uh, vendor management, purchase orders, financials. It's a suite of apps, basically. Part of the idea of breaking Folio down into pieces that are easy to replace and, and add to and extend over time. But to pick up on uh, your advice, uh, so there's a recording in uh, the YouTube channel on uh, on the latest Sprint uh, review lots of good demonstrations of acquisitions functionality there and i think what's really interesting is to see it wired together yeah uh, which is what you were saying because we could have demonstrated it earlier i mean a lot of this functionality has been sitting around but now it's wired together and it begins looking like something that somebody could point to and say that's acquisition <laughs> i know what that is yeah <laughs> i i get a sense of what they're doing here uh so that's really exciting and, and yeah, we would uh, really encourage uh, people to look at those sprint reviews. Uh, they really show the progress of the software. And, and so as I, uh, as I understand, uh, that, that functionality now is, um, is part of the, uh, the vagrant um, uh, images and vagrant boxes that are up on, uh, um, uh, up on yeah. GitHub. Okay. I am not seeing any more questions. Oh, no. Now I am seeing one more question. Is there any information on resource sharing? Um, so the best place to, to learn about uh, Project Reshare would be um, projectreshare.org. Yeah. 
uh, is the URL for the website. And, and you'll find information about the stakeholders and, and some information about the general direction. And there will be contact information. I'd encourage anyone who's interested to reach out. Um, uh, it's a new community and the website is relatively new still. Um, we've just been going for, for a few months as, as in, 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 in real action. So, uh, so reach out and ping us and, and folks would be happy to talk to you. And who's involved in, uh, in, in that community? So it's five resource sharing consortia, uh, uh, and it's the Open Library Environment and the Open Library Foundation. Uh, the Mozilla Foundation has been helping out with uh, some logistics and travel costs, and it's uh, uh, two commercial companies, Index Data and Knowledge Integration in the UK. And so it sounds like now is a really good time to get involved with that, the beginning. Yeah. A great time to come in and help shape it. Uh, in, in terms of in, in folio terms, we have we have set up our strategy and our our, our product management group, which is sort of a, 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 a parallel to the product council and folio. And we are just recruiting uh, subject matter experts to uh, to uh, do the user and space design process. We actually had um, the the parts of the folio. Um, uh, some of the same people that have been working on UX for Folio uh, visited uh, libraries last week, um, uh, a couple of different places in the US. So, so stuff is really happening. So yeah, now is the time to get involved in that community though. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. I don't see any more questions. And so, unless you have closing comments, yeah. I, I sure. How about I? Uh, we'll do a, uh, a closing round and, um, and yeah. then, uh, um, a group wave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, looking back at the uh, the past three years through this project, uh, it's been you know it's I have found it incredibly interesting um, uh, the amount of organizations that uh, that were you know that have been there since the beginning. Um, even going back to really the way we kicked off, how we would work together, the beginning of governance, et cetera, in, in Copenhagen in October um, 20, 2016. Right? That's right. Yeah, October 2016, where we started out with the idea of, of bringing together five organizations and we ended up with 50 people in the room. Um, I would say out of that 50, uh, even though some have, have stepped out, like, um, uh, um, uh, scan bit for a while, they're back and they are, are looking at ways to, uh, uh, to engage with uh, the Latin American community um, as well as um, uh, communities in Spanish, uh, um, Spain and now Portugal. So I, I'm just, I'm excited of seeing the, uh, um, uh, the amount of organizations that have come to this, uh, what we've done in three years, and how fast uh, um, uh, we're starting to deliver functionality. You know, how it's becoming, you know, it's wired together and I'm seeing, uh, seeing something to me that I recognize uh, and that will do um, you know, uh, uh, the business of, a, of an institutional library. I, I think for me, uh, it, you know, in that same kind of reflective way, the, the consistency and longevity of the commitment by the stakeholders is really impressive. Um, to keep putting the dollars in, to keep putting the people in, uh, to, to keep working together and, and resolving whatever uh, uh, conflicts we have, um, it has been remarkable. It's, no one is flagging at this point. And, and for me, the, the thing that's really exciting about that is to talk to library deans uh, who are in Olay about the strategic nature of their commitment to folio. Um, you know, that it is the most important thing that even staff are beginning to say things like, I don't know if I'm approved to do this, but the dean of the library says this is the most important thing that the library is working on right now. So yeah, I'll volunteer for that group. Um, that, that we have people who really have um, been very public about where this sits in their strategic budget, uh, how they're thinking about the future of their own libraries, um, and, and what the opportunity of Folio is. They don't look at this as simply replacing their current system, uh, because it's just not worth it to do it uh, that way, but instead to provide them with the, the infrastructure that they're going to need to 
to really pivot around the way scholarly communications are changing and the relationship that the library has to the campus at large. Uh, and, and to continue meeting those needs and to jump into new areas of uh, service that libraries can provide, those deans are looking for tools that support that. I think we knew uh, when, when we made the decision, uh, we, were, we were invited and we made the decision to enter into this adventure with, with uh, EBSCO and with, with Olay that it would be life changing, uh, that it, it, it felt in many ways like the most important undertaking that we've made. In, in, in our 25 year history as a company. And, and that has borne out. Um, I think it has changed uh, in every single respect, the way that we think of ourselves as a team. We've had most people in our little team affected by and touched by folio. Um, I think just about every day I'm involved in, in conversations with libraries and consortia and commercial companies discussing possible partnerships, dis discussing possible paths and, 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 and things that we can do together with the platform. Um, I think there is a, a, a way in which being part of Folio is, is engaging with change management as a culture, as an organization. And I feel that I see that in conversations with, with OLA member libraries and, and with, with friends at, at EBSCO. Uh, it's impossible to be part of Folio and not be be changed by it. It's yeah. not just another piece of technology. It's a, it's a certain approach to engaging with collaboration and technology. So it, it feels like when we came in, it felt like it built on everything that, that I had learned working with open source software through the years, but, but it also raised it up to a whole different level. It, it turned it up to 11. Um, so it, it's been a wild journey and yeah. nothing is really suggesting that that journey will, will slow down or, or, or settle out this coming year. So we're excited, really looking forward to this year. Well, I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing how much of this uh, comes true. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to this co same conversation next year, or actually a very different conversation next year. Uh, so seeing and no other questions, this concludes today's Folio Forum the year in review. We've been live tweeting the forum. For a short recap and links to resources, look for the Folio Forum hashtag from the Folio underscore LSP Twitter account. Thank you to the social media team from EBSCO for the live tweeting. And you can continue the conversation using that hashtag and also at the Folio discussion website, which is discuss.folio.org. The recording of today's forum will be posted to YouTube shortly. Our next, our next reg regularly scheduled forum will be next Wednesday, February 6th, and that will be on the Folio Roadmap Update. The announcements to register, I believe, have already been sent out. You can look for them also on the folio.org homepage. Thank you again to our speakers, Sebastian, Michael, and Chris, and to everyone who asked questions and added comments. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much. Laura. Cheers.